weekend all. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your weekend financial market wrap up. And this is for Friday. And we are now on the 10th of December, 2021. And wow, today we saw the CPI number overall 6.8% up. We saw that the wage gains not keeping up with that in any manner. So now the question is, what does the Fed do? It opens the door certainly for the Fed to make its move on December 15th and accelerate the tapering as they said they would. Now, I'm still not of the camp that they're necessarily going to be raising interest rates when everybody thinks they will. That number is a moving target between June and December. That seems to be where everything falls. You get hot data, they move it into June. You get really cold data, they move it back a little bit. The simple fact is the Fed's going to have the opportunity to look between now and at least March at all the data and see it. did the market come up in the CPI and does it start rolling down? That word transitory, even though they've thrown it out of their vocabulary, you think the Fed Chair Powell's not thinking about it? Of course he's thinking about it. President Biden came out today, and I'm not sure he knows much about inflation, but he said he thinks that we're looking at a peak. Okay. So when we take a look at the charts and we go to the monthly chart, you're at a new all-time high. If you were to finish the month up right now, I'm sure everybody would be happy. And away you go for this month. And it's been a heck of a gain. Look at where, how the market's come up this year. Stellar performance. Only homes have done as well as the stock market. If you own a home in many parts of the country, it's done that well. When we look at a weekly chart, Okay, here we are at 47.11, a new high weekly close. So to say that Santa's left the building, oh yeah. He's on his way and he's getting all his elf elves together. They're getting the gifts wrapped and you're gonna get, I think, something for that Christmas time. You can see on the weekly chart how the market's coming back and forth. And while it's a high weekly close, on a weekly basis, you haven't gone for a new all-time high. That can happen. You've got a pattern right now of a lower, I'm sorry, of a higher high and a lower low, so not a trend. You stepped out of that when you had this recent break. But here's something to pay attention to. In the S&P, this is always very specific to different indices. In the S&P, each break back towards this right here, 18 week average of closes has been, when it happens, harrowing. I mean, you go, oh my gosh, is, is that the end of it? And it comes back and it makes new highs. I don't think it's over. That's my point, and I, I think that's still working out. I expect the resistance to be at the new all-time high. If you look, the Bollinger Band's 47, 44 and a quarter. The last high was 47, 40, 50. So I'm looking for that to a minimum be the occurrence on this move. And momentum is picking back up. Now, you did get both numbers over 80. So could we get an embedded reading right in front of Christmas? the market wants to, it could, and that carries you into the first of the year with an embedded reading, and then you'd be looking, when does it lose it for another correction? Got it? That's the theme that I think is going to play out. The NASDAQ has done something similar. You, you're not going to see this in all the indices, but each time it too has pulled back. It has turned out to be a buy at that number. And again, I expect the challenge of the upper Bollinger Band, unlike the S&P, just an overbought condition, but momentum pointing up. And then you get to the Dow, which does break more under it. But when it does so, recently at least, it's been contained. And you have to always pay attention to this by the lower Bollinger Band. So it's got a tendency to slide a bit more get down there and find its bid. The market that's been the odd boy out has been which one? The Russell. And while it's done similar things, it's uh, the hardest one to play, and you don't go up and make these regularly new highs. This has not been where the money's at. It gets dragged along, doesn't lead the parade to higher prices. Now in the 30-year bond, we're still in an uptrend. The market's back here. Wouldn't you have thought with the 6.8% number that you would have seen today interest rates climb, there's the go-ahead, everything there? It's not what occurred. The futures markets were all higher, which means rates actually fell a little bit. Now, one day doesn't set a trend, but you've been in an uptrend, and until you break through that low on this current pattern, you're still in one, staying in one. The 10-year note's different. This is where you see the curve yield come alive. 
resistance, very clear, at the 18-week uh, average of closes. Five years even clearer on that. Dollar index having its resistance up at the upper Bollinger Band. I like this. The market's still embedded, so it can afford to back and fill here if it's going to go higher and keep the embedded weekly reading. You'll see it from there. Anything you do, the market is not screaming at you go short against that number. It's one thing to come out. It's a very different thing to want to be short. And you're getting the flip-flop potentially in the euro if you lose the embedded reading, which you have not done. So the bears are in control of this market. The bulls are in control of the dollar. You can get corrections, but watch on the weekly if you lose the embedded readings. In the Canadian dollar oversold the trend via the swing lines up but the bias has been down for actually a month you've been under that 18 week average nothing that i see that can be done there the japanese yen okay you got oversold you're correcting it's not in a trend you have a higher high and a lower and low basis there's nothing going on there bitcoin still very bearish on a weekly chart you have to take out right up here 59,680 in order for this market to say no this this selling is abated right now it can go on and the 40,000 level is potentially a target if the market grabs any traction to the downside the differential between brent and WTI oil at about the 450 level you encountered some resistance it was a vertical move from 0.81 so it probably has to consolidate that a bit but as you can see in energy while you've bounced back nicely on a weekly chart if you're a chartist that's not bullish that's where the pros are probably selling the market you have to get over this high on the current pattern to just break the trend or develop a new pattern to do something with from there. Same in the WTI oil. You found some traction also in gasoline at these prices. You've come up this uh, week and you know, well the president says you realize how much gasoline has come down. It went up 10% this week. That's what I know. And you can't get away from that. But you have a higher high, lower and low. It's a broad swinging market. It's not in a trend on a weekly basis. It's just moving in this wave back and forth. Next resistance point, 223 and a half. So you put it together, you try to come up with game plans, and that's where I step in for you. On my regular full research, and that's my complete package, Two updates a day, Monday through Thursday. I start you off Sunday night with a written update, what to expect for the Sunday night trading through the Monday morning. Then I bring you in with everything, my special reports, everything there. Now it is the end of the year, you know, I'm not gonna do as many special reports as I normally would, but they'll be picking up in January again. But in the meantime, twice daily updates, one minimum on Friday in the morning. You get the morning update, the videos are included in this, everything I've got. So how do you get this? Well, it's simple. If you haven't tried it, I'd like to give it to you for free. You can go to our website at www.irapstein.com. You can also, if you've had a free trial, you just go to our website and under the word research, it's all explained there and you sign up for it. Hope that you decide to give yourself a Christmas gift. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great weekend.